in this um, Facebook campaign that I'm setting up, my goal is to get registrations to a webinar that I'm giving. That is my goal. I don't want to spend money if I'm not getting registrations and I want Facebook to optimize to get the cheapest registrations possible. So I'm going to select the conversions strategy and I'm going to come down here and name my campaign. So I usually, I usually uh, put conversions or the campaign strategy in brackets and, um, and it happens to be the conversion rate now that you have two more options here, you can create a split test. So you can A-B test creative placement audience and delivery optimization strategies. I'm gonna choose to leave that off. And if I want to come back and run some split tests, I'll run some split tests um, with different ad sets. And I could also choose campaign budget optimization. And this I do wanna turn on. So I, you have the option of setting um, ad set level budgets like that in Google ads, those are like your ad groups. Um, what we found is that when you have campaign budget optimization, CPO, when you have it turned on, Facebook does a better job at getting you your conversions for cheaper, faster. I'm gonna set my campaign bu daily budget to $2,500 for now. I'll probably come back and change that. Um, and campaign bid strategy, this is important. You have three different options. You have lowest cost, lowest cost with bid cap and target cost. Um, if you're starting a new campaign from scratch, nine times out of 10, you wanna keep it to lowest cost and Facebook is gonna do a good job at getting that cost lower and lower. And as I'm gonna repeat many times throughout this lecture, it's important that you let things run and you have and you give pay, and you you give give the algorithm time to find the cheapest possible conversions within your daily budget. When I first launched a campaign recently, um, we were getting registrations at $19 and then within three days they came down to $2 to $3, right? So that's like a massive, massive decrease and it shows that um, Facebook does a good job at getting you those conversions for cheaper over time. You have to really let things go without touching it and, and without messing around with it too much. So I'm gonna keep it on the lowest cost. Now I'm just interested in running a test to see that if I select a target cost and I'm gonna have the option of um, at the ad set level putting in the target cost per conversion. If I put in like 50 cents in there, like my goal is to get these registrations at you know somewhere between a dollar and a 250. But if I put 50 cents in there with a high daily budget, what would happen? Like, so I'm gonna run a split test, I'll duplicate my campaign later. Once I'm done creating the campaign, I'll duplicate the campaign and I'm gonna run a split test. But for now I'm gonna type, uh, I'm sorry. For now I'm gonna choose lowest cost. Once you've chosen lowest cost, um, Facebook lets you know that ad scheduling will be done at the ad set level. I'm not going to schedule my ads. Delivery type standard. And once you click more options, you'll see that the accelerated ver um, the accelerated option is not possible um, when you're using this type of uh, bid strategy. So I'm going to click continue, and that's basically it. Like this is a pretty simple page. You're just going to name your campaign something that you'll know what it is. You'll choose your um, optimization option. If you're not sure, if your if your goal is to is to get conversions always choose the basically always choose the conversion so if you're looking to generate phone calls or form submissions or sales or whatever it may be just choose the conversion optimization strategy it's the one that works best um, and that's don't bother trying to like overthink which one which all these ones are and you know maybe if you get do the brand awareness you'll end up getting more conversions like I could just tell you from a lot of data the conversions optimization uh, mark uh, strategy works best so we're going to click continue and now we're in the ad set creation. And again, you could have your ad set name and there's a bunch of different ways to name your ad sets. Um, because I'm gonna be doing the same age range and same um, targeting, I'm not gonna include age range or locations in the ad set name. So if you're running ad sets and some ad sets are, um, you're targeting people, men and women 18 to 50 and some you're targeting uh, men and women 35 to 40, you could, you could identify that in your ad set name if that's the main difference but just for name and conventions purposes i would suggest the primary difference between ad sets being put in the name so lookalike audience so i know that this ad this audience is going to be made up of a lookalike audience and i'm going to call this um let's see live webinar so i have a i have a an audience that i'm going to upload it as a look as a lookalike audience of people who attended my live webinar. I think I have around 12 or 1300 of those. And I'm not gonna go into detail as I do that because I do have another video in the Agency Overdrive membership that talks about lookalike audiences. So I'm just gonna race through that. I'll probably speed up this video um, by about 20 times when I get to that part. Now Facebook asks you to set up your uh, conversion pixel, like what 
action you want Facebook to be optimizing for. So by default, it's selected purchase. I already have uh, tags set up on my pages. And again, this is not a video specifically about the pixel, so I'm not gonna go super in depth about it, but I don't want to track purchases. What I wanna do is track a completed registration, and it shows me with the green button that this is active and the last event was three hours ago. So I'm gonna select completed registration, and you could only choose one conversion action to optimize off of. So I'm gonna optimize off of completed registrations. And over here is very important, you wanna turn dynamic creative on. And this is gonna affect the entire ad set. Um, so you're gonna be able to, you know, run through that, we don't need to that right now, okay. So that's very important. In order to run dynamic creative, which is what we're, the bulk of this video is gonna be focused on, you have to toggle this on at the ad set level. Now we go ahead and create our audience. And this is not super important right now because this could always be changed. We're not activating these campaigns yet, but I'm gonna use a saved audience that I have here. And if I click into this box, I'll see the lookalike audiences that I've uploaded in the past. And if I scroll down, I see a list of all my previous lookalike audiences. So this one's gonna be the LP webinar um, attendees. So I have three to 4%, one to 2%. And again, if you're interested in what these all mean, like the one to 2%, four to 5%, I encourage you to watch my video on lookalike audiences. I explain in detail what all these mean. Um, so I'll take, let's see, I'll take this one for this one and I'll take um, one to two percent, right? So that's a lot of people on these audiences. Um, and I'm going to choose everyone in the United States. I'm also going to select um, Australia. I'm going to select United Kingdom. And that's probably it. I think I'm just going to do US, Australia, United Kingdom. And if you scroll, if you go down here, if you zoom out, you can sort of see worldwide what you've selected. Um, I've tested a lot of Canadian traffic with these audiences before and the, the, the CPAs were very expensive. I've tested, I've tested Mexico, the CPAs were very, very low, but I, the engagement levels, um, the turnout rate to the webinar was very low uh, as well. So I took out Mexico and we could always add Mexico back in if I want to. Um, but I'm actually thinking to recreate my funnel um, in Spanish or to have at least Spanish captions on my videos and things like that, um, which would help. So for ages, I want to target anyone between the ages of, let's say, um, 18. I don't want to go, this is like, um, I probably want to do something like 18 to 45, I would say. Um, and I'm gonna do all, gender all, language English all, and detail targeting. Now because I have, this is just a lookalike audiences, lookalike audience, um, live webinar attendees, maybe I'll do, whoa. I could, I could do one to 3% to signify which audiences that I've chosen, but I'm not gonna do that for now. So I have um, a lookalike audience, and in my next ad set, once I start duplicating my ad sets, I'm gonna do additional lookalike audiences, do a whole bunch of different cool things, um, but I'm not gonna do anything with that right now. Include people who match at least one of the following. This is where you could choose additional targeting, let's say if you have an interest in online advertising or things related to your seminar, you could search, um, you, could choose, you, could, you could see suggestions, you could browse for different ideas, but I'm gonna do that once I duplicate my first ad set. For this ad set, I wanna just be targeting my lookalike audience. Um, I could save this audience, but you know, Google sort of, uh, Facebook sort of saves them for me already. I'm gonna choose automatic placements. Okay, so this is another important thing. A lot of peop people will come into ad to Facebook ads and they'll start editing their placements. They'll be like, oh, you know, I don't wanna show up in market, in stories. I don't wanna show up in the Instagram feed. I don't wanna show up um, in interstitial ads, right? I strongly suggest you don't start playing around like that. Um, that's no longer the value proposition you have to your clients and it's no longer a good idea. Um, we've seen over and over again that automatic placements perform better. If your goal, unless there's some very, very specific reason why you just cannot be advertising, um, on why you cannot be advertising in certain placements, then go with air on the side of trusting Facebook's automation to 
get you the best possible results. Like there are certain, yeah, it's very possible that overall Facebook, the Facebook mobile news feed will perform better than Instagram stories. But again, that goes into making decisions for the group as opposed to making decisions for the individual. Facebook will know that this person tends to convert from Instagram stories and they'll show a, the right ad to that right person to optimize for the lowest possible CPA, to optimize for the lowest possible cost per conversion. Facebook has enough data to optimize for the individual and they don't have to optimize for the group. If you start making decisions about placements, you're making decisions for the group. Um, so I'm gonna choose automatic placements and I'm going to optimize for ad delivery, which is gonna be conversions, of course. We're not gonna change that. And over here, this is important. So after the clicking, after clicking ad, always do one day click. Um, because I don't want to get too bogged down in conversion attribution and conversion windows, but basically if you choose one day click or view or seven day click or one day view, you're basically allowing Facebook to give credit to a Facebook impression for a conversion. So for example, say, say you're trying to target, um, uh, say you're trying to get form submissions, right? So you show a Facebook ad to somebody on Facebook, and then they happen to do a Google, they don't click your ad, right? They're just scrolling through, they see your ad, they don't click it. And then they happen to do a Google search and they find your company name. Um, that might be five days later, or even within the same day, and they click the ad and they submit a form. Facebook will say that you got a conversion. So we don't wanna, tr I mean, in most cases, you don't wanna track view through conversions, you only wanna track click through conversions. And because of the, because this is a webinar funnel and 100% of webinar registrants will sign up after clicking the ad, I wanna choose one day click. If you have a, um, if you're asking for, a, like, you know, if you're sending people to a main page of your website, let's say there's just to the contact page of your website and you have a form, then you probably wanna choose seven day click because it's very possible that somebody will click, go to a contact page, not fill out the form yet, but then two days later they'll decide, okay, I'm ready to do it now. They'll come back to the Facebook, they'll come back to your website they might, have had it, they might have had it saved, they'll fill out the form, and you should attribute that conversion back to the original click that you paid for on Facebook. But in my purposes, since I'm doing a webinar funnel, I'm going with one day click, and I'm gonna be getting charged by an impression. Um, everything at the ad set level looks okay. Um, and one more thing, when you're running dynamic creative, you actually can't set um, schedules. I forgot about that. When you're running dynamic creative, you can't set um, day day parting schedules your ads will run all the time because facebook's basically saying like listen if you want us to be figuring out the best placements and the best variations of text and headlines and calls to action and video and, and images um we need the ability to run your ads all the time fair enough like that's okay with me so we're going to continue here and we basically finished setting up our ad set. One more thing, and I've mentioned this in other videos, don't worry about this gauge, right? It says potential reach fewer than 1,000 people. A second ago it said um, my potential reach was 4 million people, and that might've happened when I, when, when it was maybe this attribution. Right, see that it went to 4 million people. But that makes no sense because m the amount of potential reach is based on all this stuff up here, my lookalike audiences, the percentages that I'm taking, um, my, my age ranges, my gender location. It's not based on how I want to attribute conversion. So this is just a weird system. Um, so don't worry if you see this go down to being too specific, it'll change later on. So we're gonna continue, we've made our ad set. Now this is where the bulk of the work we're gonna do has to happen. And you could either close this out and do it later in the ad set, um, that's fine, um, but we're gonna do the work here. So my goal is to upload a few different videos, some images, and then have multiple different texts and headlines for Facebook to mix and match. And that's what's happening in Dynamic Creative. Facebook is taking multiple videos, multiple images, and they're gonna choose, they're gonna mix that, they're gonna mix image one with text three, then they'll mix text two with image video four, whatever it may be. And they're gonna learn which combination of elements are working the best for which visitors. Um, Facebook claims that every variation will be shown at least once, which is fine. Um, but then Google, Facebook is gonna start um, weighing which variations they show based on the data that's coming in. And there's actually a cool way to see the breakdown of which variations Facebook's showing the most and which variations are getting the best results. And you can see exactly which results each variation is generating. So I'm gonna name this ad set real quick. I'm just gonna call this dynamic creative because I'm just gonna have one dynamic creative component or one dynamic creative asset in every single ad set. 
um, and we're gonna scroll down here. Now we're gonna start adding images and video. So I wanna talk about this for a couple seconds. With video, there's a few different considerations. If you click over into this toggle, um, Facebook will give you some of these recommendations. So they want, they recommend videos not longer than 15 seconds because 15 second videos get the most placements. With a, a video that's more than 15 seconds cannot be shown on Facebook stories 